This is going to be the last video for section 3.5. And I'm starting out with number 29. And this is similar to the example I did at the end of the previous video, which was number 25. Um, so these are two hard or difficult problems. Uh, they won't necessarily are directly as it gets obvious what the limit's going to be just by looking at it and determining it based off of just the degree and numerator and denominator like I was doing in the previous video. So for number 29, so it's going to be similar to the 25 and the previous video. So only this time we're going to, it's going to follow um, example 4a on page 203. So I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to go through the example four, but of the steps I'm going to do, we're going to mirror it. So this is going to follow the steps in example 4a in our textbook on page 203. And then I'm going to also know that since our limit is x going to positive infinity, so since x is going to positive infinity, x is going to be greater than zero, and I'm going to uh, let x equal the square root of x squared, and you'll see when I do that in the problem. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is divide by x, just how to do an example uh, 4a on page 203. So first divide numerator and denominator by x. Write the problem over again. All right, so I'm going to focus only on this the fraction itself. So I'm going to simplify this first and then apply the limit. And the first step I'm going to do is divide the numerator and denominator by x. So for the numerator, it'll be the square root of x squared minus 1 divided by x. And on the denominator, it's going to be 2x minus 1 divided by x. Well, for the numerator portion, since I have the square root involved up top, I'm going to make use of this. Substitute square root of x squared in for x. So that's going to make this so x squared minus 1 over the square root of x squared. Now on the bottom part, I'm just going to separate it so I can have it as 2x over x minus 1 over x. The top part combine into one square root of x squared minus 1 over x squared. And on the bottom, it's going to be 2 minus 1 over x. Now, for the square root portion, I can write this as square, x, square root of x squared divided by x squared minus 1 over x squared. And on the bottom, still the same, 2 minus 1 over x. Well, the, square, the x squares divide 
to give you one. So up top is going to be one, square root of one minus one over x squared. And on the bottom is two minus one over x. So this is in a form where I can actually find the limit. All right, so we did all that rewriting and the original problem was, again, because X is going to positive to me, allowed me to do the square root of X squared. Um, so let's do that with X squared minus one, and then it was two X minus one. So then this is gonna equal one that X goes to infinity. And I did all this rewriting to get this. So up top, was square root of one minus one over x squared. And on the bottom was two minus uh, one over x. All right, so that's what we have. Now I'm gonna apply the limit and I can do the limit to the top and take the limit to the bottom. For the square root, I can basically take the square root outside and do the square root of the limit of one minus x squared. And then, so I have limits and then I'll just rewrite the bottom again. So I got these fraction pieces. So I have like the one over x squared and then I have the one over x. So for each one of these, so if I did limit x goes to infinity of one over x squared, that's going to be zero because the numerator has a degree of zero. So the numerator. degree m is zero, and then the denominator, the degree is two. So the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, so m less than n, that means I have y equals zero as a horizontal asymptote. And then same thing for the one over x. So the other one was limit Uh, so we have the one over x piece that's also going to give me zero to the same logic it's just the degree up top the numerator portion is one that's a constant so the degree of a constant is zero the denominator is x that's x to the first power so the degree would be one same logic though degree numerator m is less than degree denominator n so y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote so knowing these two facts, that's going to give me the following after I apply the limit. So it's going to be the square root of, and then applying the limit to one is just one, and then minus zero, because that was the one over x squared, and then two minus zero for the one over x. So that's the square root of one over two, which is going to give me one half. All right, so that's going to be the answer. All right, so that's how I did the problem. You would need to look at example 4a on page 203, and I mimicked that example. And the key is to use this relationship that x is the same thing as the square root of x squared when x is greater than 0.
and it is because we're going x to positive infinity. And uh, the key step is to divide numerator and denominator by x and then substituting this relationship that x is the square root of x squared. All right, into a format in which I can find its limit. And really, so I can get these two things to be zero, the one over x squared to be zero and the one over x to be zero. So that's that example. The next one, this will be the last example, is number 33. I'm doing limit x goes to infinity, and it's one over two x plus sine x. And then there's a hint. And I use what's called squeeze theorem. So what squeeze theorem says before I do the example. This is for limits. So I'm calling this F and then I'll put a function that's near the bottom, below it, Let's say that's G. And then I have a function that sort of oscillates in between. And then eventually it gets squeezed in between F and G to where it will collapse. So let's say it keeps going down like that for F. And then G keeps going like that. Where they're going to collapse at a certain value. And let's say that value is um, at the value C. Okay. All right, the orange thing is going to be called H. All right, so I have three things. I have the green curve, I have the orange curve, it's like oscillating, and then I have this purple curve, it's calling it G. And the idea is let's see, and where this, this dot occurs is at C. You're going to eventually. You have three functions. You have f of x, g of x, and h of x. And h of x is sandwiched in between f and g. So eventually, h of x is squeezed or sandwiched in between two functions, f of x and g of x. And you'll notice f of x, the green function, is above it. And then g of x is below h of x. So we have the lowest function, g of x, less than or equal to the orange function, h of x, less than or equal to the, the greater function, f of x. The green one. And we want to know what the limit is as x approaches c. So we want to know so x approaches c. So this value for h of x. Well, 
if they collapse at the same value. So if we know that the limit x approaches c for g of x, I'll call it L. And then also the limit x approaches c of f of x also equals L. So if they collapse to the same value, then that means f or h of x has to also be L for its limit. All right, so, so my picture, I squeeze the function h, the orange graph, eventually gets sandwiched in between f and g. And f is the green curve and g is the purple curve. And I want to know what the limit is as x approaches some value c. And it's going to be sort of this point, and we'll say that has a y coordinate of l. All right, and so if I know that the green curve as x approaches c goes to that value l, and I know the purple curve as x approaches c also goes to that same value l, then that means the function h has to go to l since it's sandwiched in between the two functions of g and f, which I already know that the top function goes to l, the bottom function goes to l, so what's in between must also go to l. So that's the idea. And how I'm going to apply it to this problem. So how to apply this concept. And our problem was limit x goes to infinity. And it's 1 over 2x plus sine x. All right, so the how I'm going to apply it is I want to find two functions where I can sandwich this 1 over x plus sine of x in between them. I want to find two functions to sandwich. this 1 over x plus sine, 1 over 2x plus sine x in between the two functions. And also that these two functions have the same value for its limit. So I can think of this h, uh, this 1 over 2x, 1 over 2x plus sine of x, think of that as my h of x in my picture. I, so I need to form two functions like the f and g. All right, and I'm going to use the fact that, well, sine, the sine function. We know the graph of sine, sine x oscillates between negative 1 and 1. All right, so, all right, so we know just, just looking at the graph, just with sine x, right, it's curved, it's, it's oscillating wave, and It varies between 1 and negative 1. All right, so I know that that's, if 
fact. So, in other words, we have negative one is less than or equal to sine x, which is less than or equal to one. So sine, sine is in between those two values. So that's sort of how, what I'm gonna use as my basis to form my two functions, f and g. So I want to find uh, a g of x that's less than or equal to my h of x. And in this case, h of x is the one over two x plus sine x. And it's that sandwiched in between and then my f of x. All right, so I want to produce f and g to where I know what the limit is for f and g. And since this function sandwiched in between f and g, it's going to have to have the same limit as x approaches infinity. Well, I know the I know sine oscillates between negative one and one, so I'm going to let g. I know that for g, it's, I can have one over two x and then minus one. That's all less than or equal to one over two x plus sine x. And then I'm gonna let f be one over two x plus one. So I really just had the same structure. I just focused on sine. Sine oscillates between negative one and one. So that's where I produce my two functions, g, where I just replace sine with either negative one or positive one for my two functions. So those are my two functions that I'm sandwiching uh, h of x in between. So I need to know, well, what's the limit for h of x, or, g, or what's the limit for g of x and h of x? So I want to do the limit of these two. Well, if I just focus on just g of x, I'm doing x approaches infinity. And I was letting g of x be one over two x minus one. Well, that's going to be equal to zero because the numerator has a degree of zero because it's a constant. So m is zero. And on the denominator, I have x. And x has a exponent of one. So it's got n equals one for its degree. So m is less than n. That means y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote, which basically means our limit has to be zero for that. Similar uh, what was I using green? Similar, that's going to be the same thing for 1 over 2x plus 1 as x approaches infinity. So similar. Right, that equals 0 as x approaches infinity. So I got these two functions. I'm sandwiching my orange h of x in between the two. And so I can say in conclusion, from squeeze theorem, and I'll use the colors. So limit x approaches infinity of 1 over 2x minus 1. That's going to be less than or equal to our limit x approaches infinity of 1 over 2x plus sine x. 
which is less than or equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over 2x plus 1. And I know the, uh, the two values, two functions I'm sandwiching between that's 0. The, the outer one, f, this, this is 0. So that means my orange function has to be 0. All right, and that's going to be my answer. It's, the answer is 0 for the limit. OK, so the idea, again, so squeeze theorem. Squeeze theorem just says that I, if I have three functions and I can bound a function called h of x in between two functions called g of x and f of x, in my picture, I have g of x being the bottom function, and I'll say f of x, the green one, is going to be the top function, and then h of x is the orange, that's the middle function. So if I know that the limit of the top function and bottom function are both equal to L, and I know that that function that's sandwiched in between the top and bottom function, then that limit has to also equal L for some value C. Now, I use that logic for this problem. So I want to bound, in this case, my 1 over x plus 1 over 2x plus sine of x in between two functions. So this is going to be my middle function. And then I use the factorial sine um, sine graph oscillates between negative one and one, right? So that's, we know that sine, biggest sine gets is one, the smallest sine gets, slowest it gets is negative one. So therefore I can create my two functions, like the outer functions being one over two X minus one, and then one over two X plus one. I'm only changing uh, the two X parts the same. That's just the sine X bit. I'm, this uh, value varies between negative one and one. So now I've found these two functions sandwiched the orange one over two x plus sine x in between these two. And then I looked at the limits for the two functions that I formulated. And the one over two x minus one limit as x goes to infinity is zero because that's because of the horizontal asymptote is zero because it degree in the numerator is zero because the constant has a degree of zero because it's just one, right? So one's a constant, so it's degree of zero. And then on the bottom, the degree is one because of the leading term 2x has the exponent one for the um, exponent. So since the degree up top is less than degree in the bottom, that gives me zero for horizontal asymptote. And it's the same exact logic for the 1 over 2x plus 1. All right, so since I've sandwiched this in between those two functions, and I know that the outer functions have the same limit of 0, that means the inside function, the middle function, has to also be 0 by squeeze theorem. All right, so that's how I did that problem. And I had to apply the squeeze theorem. And this is it for section 3.5.